to me and be saved. Fallen, 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 you need a savior. Let me ask you a question. How can a dead man pass through a narrow gate? And since salvation is more about than anything else, the declaration of God's power to the universe, you can be assured that if God has saved a person, He has changed that person in the very core of their being, and He will continue working in that person to bring about sanctification and conformity to Christ. That is why it is absolutely absurd to believe that a man can be Christian and not be changed. And not only not be changed, but have his course set by the hand of God so that throughout all the days of his life, he continues to change. Now, albeit, I will give it to you, that the Christian life is not necessarily a continual rise. But there is growth and setback and growth and struggle. But throughout the full course of the Christian life, you will see the man being transformed and changed. Because the God who began a good work in him will finish it. And we have literally millions, untold millions of people who have made their decision for Christ. But there's no marks of true Christianity in their life. It's because a mere human decision is not equal to the supernatural regenerating work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the true believer. Your job is that when you have properly preached the gospel and you have called men to repentance and faith, that even though you have surveyed their life for a few hours in counseling, deep counseling, you depart from them with both promises and warnings. Promises that if the God that if the if God truly continues this work, it is evidence that he began it and warnings that if after this night or after a short period of seeming to walk with Christ, they fall away or turn away, it's evidence that nothing happened to them that night. When was the last time you warned one of your converts regarding that? If you say almost never, then you've departed from historical Christianity. More importantly, you've departed from Scripture. It is absolutely pitiful that today in the evangelical community, for me to stand up and be so bold is a scandal. How could it be that in a few short years, in our conservative supposed community, that it can be a scandal for a believer to stand up and say, let me make it really clear. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is absolutely everything. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Any prophet that does not point directly to Jesus as man's only hope is false and damned. And let me make it even more clear for you. Everything outside of Jesus Christ is absolutely absurd. He is before all things. All things were made by Him, through Him, and for Him. Also know this, that a man who refuses to speak about sin, you can count on the fact that the Holy Spirit has absolutely nothing to do with his ministry. Nothing to do with his ministry. You take a man who claims that he is all about the love of God and he never speaks about sin, you write it down, the Holy Spirit is a million miles, if we could use such a statement, from him. Regeneration, the doctrine of being born again, not only enables that man to pass through that narrow gate, it also enables that man to walk in the narrow way. And he doesn't walk in the narrow way grudgingly. He doesn't walk in the narrow way as some horrible duty he must fulfill in order to obtain heaven. He walks in the narrow way because his heart has been changed to love the narrow way. Because the narrow way is the way defined primarily by the teachings of Jesus Christ. And since he loves Christ, he loves his teaching. And since he loves his teaching, he loves walking in the narrow way. As John tells us in 1 John, it's not burdensome. It's a delight. 
Now that is not to say that there's not a struggle with the flesh and a struggle against the devil and a struggle against the world, but the essential part of really who we are delights in the law of God and delights in Christ. It's a narrow way because it's marked out by this book. I want you to know something. People come to me all the time and say, Brother Paul, I got a new relationship with God. And I say, do you have a new relationship with His Word? Because if you don't have a new relationship with His Word, you don't have a new relationship with Him. You see, this narrow way is not just outward principles. It's not just external things, although it will affect outward and external things. It is about regulating your heart. Bring your heart and mind in submission to the Word of God. It is a narrow way. That is another thing that this means. It is a rough, difficult way. It is a way of battle. This narrow way is uphill. It is against the world. It is against the flesh. It is against your culture. It is against everything you've ever been taught outside of Scripture. The great battles that he had with Vanity Fair. And you have no battle at all. I can follow you around, I guarantee it, and I see you walk through Vanity Fair with your Xboxes and your TVs and your text messaging and everything else you do. Vanity Fair! You're so much like your culture, you have no idea how far from Scripture you are. This is a narrow way. It is fighting against the world. It is realizing with desperation that this is the only way. This is the only hope. Christ is salvation. Heaven is the goal. If I have to lose everything, I will lose it. Christ warned us about hell. He warned us about it. You see, that is why it is an absolute logical absurdity to make Jesus a part of your life. Or to tell someone they have a wonderful life, they're just missing Jesus. It's an absolute absurdity. Why? Because if heaven's heaven, hell's hell, and Christ really did what He said He did, He has to be everything. Logic demands He's either everything to us or He is nothing to us. It can't be any other way. That's why He demands absolute everything whenever He makes a demand. Absolute loyalty, absolute confidence, absolute giving away of self for the sake of Him, His kingdom, and His righteousness. In spite of all of the affliction, all the suffering, all the fighting, His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Because He carries that for you. And He carries us.